Welcome to the podcast. I'm Angela Bobier, and this is Life in the Talbot Settlement, brought to you by Tircano Heritage Society and Bacchus Page House Museum. In this series, we will do our best to give you a full appreciation of the history of Western Algon County in southwestern Ontario, from First Nations through the original European settlers to the 1950s. I'll cover one topic per episode, with the first eight setting the tone for who we are, where we are, and what we do here at Bacchus Page House Museum. Please follow us on all social media by searching at Bacchus Page House, spelt B-A-C-K-U-S, P-A-G-E-H-O-U-S-E. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you are a descendant of James Fleming and his wife, Barbara Windecker, then I need to talk to you. James and Barbara were the first settlers in what has become Elgin County and Alderborough Township, now the municipality of West Elgin. Due to the pandemic, we couldn't hold the planned 225th anniversary event, so we are celebrating instead on June 24th, 25th, and 26th in 2022 at Bacchus Page House Museum. All descendants are invited to participate. This episode, you'll hear about the lives of James and Barbara Fleming. In 1796, James Fleming and his wife, Barbara Windecker, settled on Lot 6, First Concession, broken front of what would become Aldboro Township in Elgin County. Land on both sides of the Thames River were owned by Fleming descendants until 1871. So just who are James and Barbara? Where did they come from? How did they end up on the shore of the Thames seven years before the Talbot settlement? And how was their relationship with their nearest neighbors, the Delaware Nation at Moravian Town and Moravian Church missionaries? James was born in 1760 in Bleach Green, Londonderry, Northern Ireland, to Andrew Fleming and a woman whose name is unknown. James left Ireland for Philadelphia in 1786. He brought a shipload of merchandise with him and started a store in that city. On account of his love for the British government, he became objectionable to his fellow townsmen and thought it best to go to Canada. He settled at Black Rock near Fort Erie in the vicinity of Niagara Falls, and he became a dry goods merchant of that town. In 1796, or near that period, he was chosen by Lord Simcoe, who was the Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada, at that time to be one of his party on an excursion to Western Ontario, in the vicinity of Windsor and Detroit, and the mouth of the Miami River. James acted as the boatman. On the same trip was Thomas Talbot, who you can learn more about in Episode 2 of our podcast. They came in a boat to Port Stanley, or Port Talbot, on Lake Erie, and portaged across country to Muncie Town, down the Thames River by canoe or rowboats. Members of the Muncie branch of the Lenape Delaware Nation arrived in the area in the 18th century and were encouraged by Simcoe to settle in the area, previously named by French explorers River La Tranche, or the Thames River. Simcoe, Fleming, Talbot, and the rest of their party camped for the night on a beautiful spot on the riverbank in what would become Algon County, which attracted James Fleming's admiration to such an extent that he decided after his return to Black Rock across the Niagara River from Fort Erie, he would return and purchase this land. He did so the next year by taking his wife and two daughters, an infant and a toddler, by passage on a vessel to Detroit, then skirting Lake St. Clair in a canoe to the mouth of the Thames and up the river 50 or 60 miles. The land in the area was so ripe with wildlife and timber and natural drainage that this new world offered all could one ask for just outside their cabin door. This could explain why James and Barbara's family flourished during these early years of quiet solitude. James had married Barbara Windecker at Fort Erie in 1793. Barbara was born July 19, 1774, in Snyder County, Pennsylvania, or on the banks of the Mohawk River, New York State, 
depending on which historical record you look at, to parents Heinrich Henry Windecker, a United Empire loyalist, and Dorothy Pickert. Henry Windecker, a loyalist who served under Butler's Rangers in the raids of the Mohawk Valley in Montgomery County, New York, 1781, was also in the Wyoming Valley, Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, and ultimately removed to the Niagara region, Upper Canada, after the American Revolution. He received a land grant, as did his daughter Barbara in 1820, when she petitioned to be given 200 acres, Lot 17, 4th Concession, in Don Township, Lambton County. She died aged 88 on September 7, 1862, in what is West Elgin, and is buried at the Fleming Farm Cemetery. At her death, Barbara had 71 grandchildren and many great and great-great-grandchildren. We are looking for all those living descendants for the family reunion in June of 2022. James passed before Barbara on September 8, 1838, in what is now West Elgin, at age 78. James was also buried on the Fleming farm. Barbara told a story of the first tree her husband James felled. Quote, he asked her to come into the woods to see his first effort in that direction, and she remembered carrying her baby in her arms and leading the other child by the hands. These two daughters were born at Fort Erie, one on May 5, 1794, the other November 25, 1795, end quote. Their names were Hannah and Dorothy, otherwise known as Dolly. Henry Fleming, a son, was the first settler child born in Aldeboro Township and Elgin County on March 23, 1798. James Fleming was well-educated for the time in which he lived. He was a Christian and trained his family religiously according to his Presbyterian training. The second son, Andrew Fleming, was born on the Fleming farm in Aldborough on March 24, 1800. He made a written statement in 1852 that he was on the battlefield the day after the Battle of the Thames and was around 13 years of age. Other children were Samuel, George, born in 1804 and passing away in 1883, another daughter, Mary, and Rebecca, James Jr., born in 1811 and passing away in 1848, and finally Anne. In the wilderness, education was difficult, but Mr. Ward, also known as Commissary Ward, was engaged for this duty. James, the youngest son, also spent two years at a school in Chatham. He was the first to introduce shorthorn cattle to the area after he inherited his parents' farm. He married Anne Gibb, daughter of Captain James Gibb of Scotland, who came to Mosa Township in Middlesex County in 1830. The Fleming Farm was raided in 1813 by General Harrison during the War of 1812, and the house and contents were burned while the family fleed. After his death, James left Barbara in care of their youngest son, James Jr., listing in his will the house and the young orchard. James was part of the Episcopal Church, the American version of the Anglican Church. Barbara identifies herself as Methodist after a visit in 1804 from Reverend Nathan Bands to their homestead. Daniel Springer provides Barbara Fleming, a widow at the time, with a declaration that James Fleming did his duty in the militia during the War of 1812. When you move to the wilderness, as the Flemings did, having neighbors means something much different than what we think of today. I can see a house on either side of mine and some across the street. But for the Flemings, they were miles from the nearest people. Below, on the River Thames, there were the Moravian Mission and other settlers at rare intervals. Carpenter, a sailor, the Dolsons, and others, who had come in before the advent of Simcoe, access from the older settlements about Detroit being comparatively easy for them. According to the survey made by one McNiff in the fall of 1790, there were 28 log houses below the site of Chatham, together with properties to the north and west, in the names of Surflet, Sharon, Mary, Peck, Field, New Curry, Williams, McCormick, Dolson, Holmes, Meldrum, Park, and Sarah Aisney. I know I'm interested in the history of the Moravian mission of indigenous peoples that I just mentioned, so I bet you are too. A group of Muncie, displaced from their origins in New York State, including Manhattan Island, was converted to Christianity by missionaries of the Moravian Church in Pennsylvania. These persons and their descendants are known as the Christian Muncie by governments, but they of course use their own language to describe themselves. 
they moved to Ohio country under pressure from European settlers in the eastern United States. Vibrant Moravian Christian First Nation settlements were established in Schoenbrunn, Nattenhuten, Salem, Petquoting, and Goshen. I am sure I have said at least one of those names wrong, and I do apologize. After many of those in Nattenhuten and Salem were murdered by American colonial militia in the Nattenhuten massacre of the Moravian Christian martyrs on March 8, 1782, during the American Revolutionary War, the remaining Christian Muncie in Ohio gathered in Sandusky and led by Moravian missionary David Zeisberger departed towards the Thames River. At first, they temporarily settled near present-day Amherstburg, Ontario in 1792, but Zeisberger obtained permission from the British colonial authorities for the community to inhabit a site on the Thames River near where it's currently located today. These were the closest people living near the Flemings. Now from their website, quote, The Delaware Nation at Moraviantown is one of the oldest settlements in the region as it was founded in 1792. Our community played an integral part in the War of 1812 as we stood next to Tecumseh and other Allied forces, both First Nation and British, to hold our ground against invading American soldiers. But we would pay a price for our allegiance as our original village, located on the north side of the Thames River, was burned to the ground by retreating American soldiers at the close of the war. Today our community is located on the south side of the river, however some of the first buildings rebuilt after the war continue to stand today. A mission church and home stand as testimony to our resiliency." End quote. I recommend visiting Fairfield on the Thames National Historic Site on Longwoods Road near Bothwell in Lambton County. You can read interpretive signs describing how the Delaware, Ojibwe, and Iroquois joined forces with the great Shawnee leader Tecumseh to make a final stand against the invading American cavalry. During the War of 1812 between Great Britain and the United States, the Battle of the Thames took place near that community. The Shawnee leader Tecumseh, an ally of the United Kingdom, was killed by invading United States forces. Following that battle, before the U.S. cavalry left the area, it burned the entire Christian Muncie community to the ground, and many people died. As stated before, the community rebuilt on the river, and they're still there in their present location. Now, to conclude with some descendants of James and Barbara, here's a short history taken straight out of the book called Romantic Kent, published in 1904. James C. Fleming, treasurer of the County of Kent, was the son of Andrew Fleming Sr. Andrew Fleming, the second son of James Fleming Sr., was born at Aldborough in the County of Elgin, March 24, 1800, and there remained until his majority, after which he relocated on a farm in Mosa Township, where he remained until 1866. He moved to Chatham Township in the County of Kent, where he remained until his death on the 5th of December, 1884. In April 1827, he had married Frances Ward, who became the mother of 12 children, four sons, and eight daughters. They were, number one, Mary, Mary James Banning, and both are now deceased, leaving his son Andrew, who is a successful merchant in Red Bluff, California. Two, Anne is deceased. Three, George, who is unmarried, was formerly a superintendent of mines in California, but is now living on his ranch in Brentwood, California. 4. Peter, with his sons Clifford and Burton, is an extensive manufacturer of farm implements in Huntsville, Missouri. 5. Andrew Miles Farmer, living in Los Angeles, California. 6. Sarah, widow of William Merritt, is living in Chatham. 7. Maria, Mrs. Allen, is deceased. 8. Elizabeth and Magdalena are twins. Magdalena died in childhood, and Elizabeth married Augustus Thrasher, who died at the age of 30, leaving two children, Walter A., who is a practicing lawyer in Chatham, and Eva, wife of William Singer Jr. of Chatham. 10. Amanda M., Mrs. Dollins, is the mother of three children, A.F. Dollins, DDS of San Francisco, California, Mrs. John Fleming of Raleigh Township, and William with his parents in Dover Township. 11. Melissa, Mrs. Seward, is a widow living in Chatham. 12. James C. Fleming, born January 27, 1846, on the old homestead in Mosa Township, County of Middlesex, 
When he was 21 years of age, the family moved to Chatham Township in the county of Kent. He was the youngest of the family and remained on the farm caring for his parents during their declining years. In 1885, he was elected a member of the council of his township and a representative to the county council, which position he held until 1887 when he received the appointment of clerk of Kent County. He ably filled this position until November 1902 when he was appointed treasurer of the county. Mr. Fleming has always taken an interest in educational matters. While on the farm, he was a member of the local school board, and since coming to Chatham, he has been a member of the high school board of that city. Socially, he is a member of the K of P, and politically, he is a reformer. In 1895, he was united in marriage to Miss Mary Margaret Rutherford, and of this union came three children, Margaret Francis, born March 2, 1896, Andrew James, born 1897, and Jean Isabel, born the 11th of January, 1902. Mr. and Mrs. Fleming are members of Victoria Avenue Methodist Church. Their pleasant home on Victoria Avenue, where the usual hospitality of the Fleming family abounds. Mr. Fleming was treasurer of the church and also a member of the trustee and quarterly boards. End quote. If you are a descendant of James Fleming and Barbara Windecker, we are looking for your information to add to the family tree that is being created. Anyone willing to assist with organizing the event on June 24th, 25th, and 26th, 2022, or wanting to attend the event, please contact me, Angela Bobier, Cultural Manager at Bacchus Page House Museum, at info at bacchuspagehouse.ca. Please join us next week, where we'll be remembering George Henry Bacchus, also known as Gordon Gilbert, a local World War II veteran. Thanks for listening. Please share the podcast with your friends and follow us on all social media platforms at Bacchus Page House. The Bacchus Page House Museum and Turconnell Heritage Society acknowledges the land we are on today as the traditional territory of First Nations people, the Attawandaron, and the Iroquois. As settlers at a settler-focused museum, we value both the significant historical and contemporary contributions of all original peoples and ask how we can be supportive in Indigenous cultural renewal. Life in the Talbot Settlement is a production of Turcano Heritage Society, operators of Bacchus Page House Museum, funded by the Department of Canadian Heritage. Your host has been Angela Bobier. Music provided by Jack Whitmer. Thanks to our producer, Caitlin Reedsma. To make a charitable donation and to contact the Bacchus Page House Museum, visit our website, www.bacchuspagehouse.ca. And thank you for listening. <laughs>